It's Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live every other Wednesday at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, comics.aadl.org. And this is the show where uh, I'm visited upon by a bunch of cartoonists to talk about making comics, uh, writing comics, drawing comics, uh, character design, uh, the lifestyle of a cartoonist, all the stuff that goes into this medium that drives us so crazy. My name is Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist, and with me today... Full house, full room of people today. Uh, I'm going to start with our Skype guest because I'm very excited to talk with her. Uh, Megan Brennan of, oh gosh, let's go through all of your rules. <laughs> uh, Pencilpup.com, schoolofworld.tumblr.com. Uh, what, what's, what's your main Tumblr, Megan? Um, I think it's just megthebrennan.tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> But you are you are the artist and co-creator of School of World, which the book. <laughs> yeah, I've got the book. Uh, fantastic, fantastic comic that if if you haven't read it before, it's so good. What is School of World about? It's about a little boy and his papa. Yeah, it's um a little boy named Little Boy <laughs> um, asks his papa questions about the world because he doesn't understand anything. Um, so he asks questions that like me and um the writer of the comic, my friend Rao have about the world, like, how do we be cool kids? How, how do we answer the phone? Um, and then, like, there are a lot, a lot of dumb questions, too, because we've gotten our followers to ask questions. So sometimes <laughs> Papa's asking questions like, how to Dougie? Or, like, how to time travel? Well, um, and, and it's got this, this really lovely uh, verbal style to it that I just I love so much. Like, here's one of the strips right now. Papa, teach me how to love. I cannot do that, little boy. I am not hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, teach me to chic fashionable. Okay, little boy. Wear lots of feathers and glowing pee-pee a lot. What? Oh, go going pee-pee-pee -pee -pee a lot. You will be chick magnet. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a really, really funny book that everybody who loves comics should read. Uh, I also have here Life of Luna, which is a oh, yeah. comic I got from you at SPX a couple years back. Uh, and this is about Sailor Moon's cat. Yeah, I... Um... I, I was thinking about, like, there's, like, the reboot was announced a couple years ago, or a year ago, maybe? And I got really excited, so I did a Sailor Moon comic, and then now I keep getting, like, reblogs of it, even though it's been a really long time, and <laughs> not sure how I feel about some of the drawings in it anymore. Oh, I, I love it. Uh, but, but the one I'm most excited about right now, and you just celebrated a year anniversary of yeah. Pencil Pup. I looked all over for the mini comic, and it, this is this is the sign that I read a comic a lot is when it turns up missing because it means I've been carrying it all over the house. <laughs> but Pencil Pup is this bizarre and wonderful comic about a girl who finds herself trapped in this netherworld dungeon with this happy puppy with legs made of pencils and this very very frightening owl and I, I, I don't even know how to describe what the story is it's like it's like the cutest Twilight Zone I've ever seen in my life so um, can, can you describe it better than that <laughs> I, I don't know where to go <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's, but that's it. That's at pencilpop.com. And I just, I encourage everybody who loves delightful things to read that comic. So, anyway, Meg, really, really super happy to have you here. So, thank you for making time to be on the show to talk about Tumblr with us today. I got to introduce our other guests in the room. So, uh, I'll start with Lauren. Lauren Hauser, Blizzard Paw. That, that's, that's the, the branding you keep everywhere, right? Um, yeah, I'm starting to switch over though more to like Lazuli. Um, my Tumblr is lazuliart.tumblr.com. Oh. So that's that's just the art blog. I don't recommend going to my main blog. Um, <laughs> unless you like Tom Hiddleston a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some of that. But you are a cartoonist too. Yeah. Uh, we've known each other for a long time now, since like you were 14 or something. 15? 17. Seven? Is that how old you were when we met? Oh. Yeah, we didn't. Well, I guess I took some of your like classes at the library, but it wasn't until my senior year in high school that oh. we took that class. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So it, yeah. seems like, it seems longer to me every minute in eternity of knowing Lauren Hauser. Uh, but, uh, so about five years. Okay. Well, that's a long time. Yeah. I, I mean, in, especially in regards to the pr proportion your life to mine, it's a longer time for you than me. Yeah. Uh, and you did a mini comic called Keeping Secrets. Yeah. Which, can we still get this? Yeah, I still have some. Um, I need to restock it at Vault of Midnight and put some offerings online, but yeah. Yeah, you got to put it in like a Store Envy site or something. What's, what's, what's Keeping Secrets um, about? Keeping Secrets was, I'm, I'm working on a future webcomic project, and this was uh, kind of a little backstory for one of the minor characters, just 
something I wanted to develop that I wouldn't be able to fit in the main storyline. But it's just like I wanted that conversation out and in drawing, so <laughs> in yeah. comic form. So th this is part of a larger world that you're eventually going to release online. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and also, you on your um, DeviantArt, you've got lots of Nuzlocke. Comics. No, oh, I you just, took those down. I didn't post any. Oh, I thought you did. Mm -mm. Um, oh. The thing that I've been posting recently, um, and I guess we could, some of the things we could discuss was a DeviantArt original character tournament, mm -hmm. the OCT, um, where you know it's it kind of is sound. It's what sounds like you know create an original character. Uh, they had there's already a set story or universe and. Uh, you put your character in with a bunch of other ones and you just climb to the top. You can sometimes have to fight other people, like whose comic is better kind of thing, or it's just like how your character solves the problem and you advance up the levels. And I did that for uh, like five months. But that was only like two rounds too, <laughs> <laughs> two or three rounds. So there's like a lot of that right now. It was a it was a Pokemon based OCT, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and this is something that people should know before they go to your site is that you really, really love Pokemon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fact. <laughs> There's a lot of Pokemon on my Tumblr and on my DeviantArt. And like, 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 not just like, oh, I'm a fangirl for Pokemon. Like, you have real relationships with your Pokemon that you nurture on your games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and the latest game didn't help, you know, with the new the little Pokemon Ame where you play with them and you can feed them. It's just like... <laughs> I shouldn't be this connected to my Pokemon, <laughs> but I am. And, 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 and when you were doing the Nuzlocke comics, I remember one of your Pokemon died. I was very upset about that. Y you were very, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like I, I felt like I needed to send you a card. I was like, oh, you know, sorry about your loss kind of thing. Um, but yeah, good to have you back on the show, Lauren. Uh, and then we've got Maggie Ram returning to the show as well. Hey, everybody. Maggie Ram of pifflethecomic.tumblr.com. Yes, I've got... I've got three websites, I guess. I've got PiffleTheComic, <laughs> yeah, dot .tumblr.com. Everybody's got lots of URLs. Um, <laughs> I work for uh, Sagar.com, which has a blog called SecretsEndGarden.com, which has a, yeah, there it is. It's up on the screen. Um, and that has a bunch of comics about yoga and meditation and mindfulness. And then I also have a blog, um, IP survival blog dot com, <laughs> which is a blog about trying to make a graphic novel by March. Oh, so you or comic. So you're journaling like the whole. Yeah, the whole thing. the whole thing, and you can you can see my struggles. <laughs> online. <laughs> And, and feel feel for you. Yeah, feel for me. <laughs> Been there. Yeah. So so that's one of the reasons we cartoonists like to watch other cartoonists process <laughs> blogs. It's, it's, it's like it's like the grind shot on America's Funniest Home Videos where we're all like, oh, oh, I feel that. That's terrible that yeah. you just went through that. You're like you look at like what time a post is up and you're like, oh, four a.m. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Okay, so uh, topic. We got to get into the topic. Uh, we got a question in the Q and A app on the Google Hangout. Uh, Brian Russell's asking, "Is there still a chat feature? Is it on another website?" No. For this one, what we're doing is we're using the Q and A app on uh, Google Plus Hangouts. So if you guys want to chime into the discussion, you can uh, post your questions there. That's the thing I'm going to be watching today. Um, but we've got Al in the control room also watching for comments uh, and capturing links that we discuss in the show today. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Posting stuff on the web. Stuff has changed a lot in the last 10 <laughs> years. I mean, I started doing web comics in two, like beginning of 2003 and like I remember having to like hand like hand type HTML for my web. Every time I put up a new page, I'd have to make another HTML page to post on the site and then update like the before and uh, uh, forward and back buttons on the pages and it was a real pain in the tuchus. Uh, and then, like, getting the word out about your comic was totally different back then. Like, you had to go to forums and get into discussions with strangers and then, like, have your SIG file be like, read my comic. <laughs> uh, it was really hard to build an audience. And nowadays, it's like there's a million ways to do this thing. And, like, you don't even have to, like, pay for any services nowadays. Like, I had to pay for web hosting and stuff back then. But now you got, like, you got, what, Smack Jeeves, you got... Uh, what are the other ones? Weebly. You, you're Weebly, yeah. yeah. That, well, nah, uh, mm, mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I, that's more for, I, it's like a process blog. It's got more like text things. It doesn't yeah. have anything like, like comics. I have a Tumblr. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of comics on it. So it's good for, it's good for that. And I have to, I have to have that up for, um, I have like professors and people who are, you know, in charge of things that they have to have something to look at. But I wouldn't have that on Tumblr. And you can't like share it as readily as on Tumblr. 
you know how okay. there's not that reblog button that makes <laughs> things so easy. Okay, well that that, that leads me to talking about Tumblr because there's a lot of things to, to to pick out there right now. But you guys like have a lot of stuff on Tumblr, and Megan and you in particular, like your, the comics we mentioned are all on Tumblr, right? Pencilpup.com yeah. takes you to Tumblr. Um, so okay, I got advice from somebody in the publishing industry recently. Uh, I have a lot of Google Plus followers because I got put on their suggested user list, which was great and everything. I got all these people uh, watching my posts, uh, but. I said to somebody in the publishing industry, I'm like, I wonder if I can leverage that to like get better uh, advances on books. Because like, hey, look at the audience I have, right? <laughs> and they, they responded with, you know, audience is not as important as notes on Tumblr. Like if you have a lot of notes on something on Tumblr, that means you have a lot of influence. And you can have very few followers but have a lot of influence because your stuff gets passed around a lot. And so like, it's like, really, you need to have your eyes on Tumblr more so than other places right now. Uh, and I got, it got me thinking about that, and then I went to Tumblr, and I tried playing with it, and, I, and I've had a Tumblr account for years. I've just been using it as sort of like a mind dump. It's just like, here's everything I think about right now. But I haven't really nurtured it or done anything with it, so, and then when I tried, I'm like, I don't... Basically what I'm saying is, Megan, teach me to Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping all you guys can, like, uh, this is a totally selfish episode for me. I don't know <laughs> how Tumblr works, and I hope you guys can walk me through it. Because it's a weird bird. It's like, it's a social network, and it's a content management platform. And, you know, uh, there's, like, this whole thing about, like, when you go to it, you go to a dashboard. You don't actually go to, like, seeing people's Tumblr sites. You just see their content, but then you can go to their Tumblr sites. And So, anyway, uh overview time i'm gonna throw a squishy question at you guys first and then we'll start to drill down what's so great about tumblr why do you guys spend so much time on it <laughs> <laughs> lauren uh, some days i wonder um, <laughs> <laughs> i'd say you know part of it's probably because a lot of our generations on it so we all have like a similar mindset you know to just kind of uh you know it could be political views or it could be the fact that we just marathon three seasons of a series in two days <laughs> yeah you know just like kind of what we do um and of course like the fandoms as well like the the grouping of you know f the fans of shows and uh comics and movies you know like we all can collect really easily and share our feelings and our you know artwork for it or edits and stuff like that and so that's like it's nice and collected there you don't have to go scour the internet for it so it's it's people with similar tastes, like what what the young people are watching right now. So that's why when I post like a 1982 GoBots drawing, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course they care. <laughs> well, but that's actually kind of one of the nice things is because like while it might not be one of the bigger fandoms because maybe it's a little bit older or anything or. <laughs> You know, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I know what it's you mean. like, but it's easy for them to find it. Like using the tag system, it's like you guys can find each other a lot easier than if you just had like a fan page somewhere off of like MySpace or something. Yeah. Yeah. like she said, um, when you have, uh, like, say you just like marathon something on Netflix. Like I got introduced to Doctor Who, and it was a big mistake. <laughs> and, but like right after I got introduced to Doctor Who, I started searching all the Doctor Who tags, and that was also a mistake. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's just, it makes things really, I think that one of the things that I really like about Tumblr is how accessible it is. It's like, not only can you get to the content that you want, but if you yourself have a blog, like if you want to reblog something, it's just like a click. It's not something, like it's not coding something, mm -hmm. which is a pain okay M megan oh i was just gonna say it's like sometimes if you draw something it's kind of like there aren't that many fans when there is the one fan <laughs> who loves it they get really excited and then like they reblog and you can see like all of the like oh my god it's my favorite thing nobody knows <laughs> it's so, good. so it's kind of rewarding <laughs> so so niche stuff too yeah Okay, so it's not just because, like, when I look at my feed, I see a lot of Doctor Who. Yeah. I see a lot of well, I follow you, Lauren, <laughs> so I see a lot of Loki. I see. And then, I haven't been doing that so much lately. You and a lot of Harry Potter. You keep no. saying this like it's a no. problem. From, from the, 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 <laughs> the Harry Potter play. What is that called? Harry uh, Potter musical. Yeah. Harry haven't, Potter musical. I don't do that very often either. Right now, it's Attack on Titan, and uh, uh, there's something else I'm doing right now, but I can't remember. But, oh, uh, Persona. <laughs> Oh. That's what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But uh, I'm wondering if you guys together can characterize uh, 
a Tumblr user. I mean, well, you've characterized the users, right? So it's like fandoms. It's like it's like uh, community building or gathering around things that you love through the tagging system. I want to talk about tags later, but <laughs> uh, but okay. Can you characterize your favorite Tumblr artists? Can you paint a picture of what do they do that delights you so much when you find somebody who's like yes when you type all caps when you reblog it? My um one of my favorite tumblers is ginger Hayes. yes yeah, well stevenson uh, mm, yeah i love her art and i think one of the great things that she does is that she'll go out and she'll see a movie she'll see something like avengers or i think she just went and saw uh the new hunger games catching fire thing mm -hmm. and then she she just made this like funny comic about how uh katniss wears the dress that's supposed to be symbolic of a mocking jay and then uh, one of the other characters in the movie wore a dress that was symbolic. And she's like, look, my dress is symbolic too. And then it like changes into like a uh, big foam finger <laughs> flipping the one. bird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I think that's, I think that's one of the reasons why she's doing so successful is that like, I think her fandom started with her drawing the bro ship of the rings. And it's like, it changes all of the characters from fellowship of the rings into these tiny little bros with like lattes and stuff. <laughs> And so I think it's, um, I think that like being successful is kind of taking what's like currently popular and then just like putting your spin on yeah, it. Yeah, putting your spin on it. So, uh, so commentary on pop culture kind yeah. of thing. Because I, I see that that when Pacific Rim came out, I remember her feed was oh, a lot gosh. of drawings of those Russians. <laughs> the Russians. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> I love that. Megan, what, 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 what's some of your favorite Tumblr artists? What do they do that, that delights you? I, I really like people who post, like, I, like I follow mostly, like, comics people and illustrators and stuff. I mean, I follow some fandom stuff, too, but um, but I really, like, on Tumblr, there's a lot of, like, people share really, like, personal comics. Like, sometimes it's, like, I love this character so much, but sometimes it's, like, here's a story about my life, like, growing up, and, like, you can see a lot of, like, really personal comics and art and stories and stuff, and there's a lot of, like, sharing that on... I feel like other, like I used to follow like artists through their person, like their own separate websites. And there wasn't as much of like, here's like a comic that I made really quickly that I really had this emotion I had to share. And then like people, like you can see followers sometimes, like if you put something up, like they'll reblog it and be like, this, this is me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Identification and like, like sharing feelings. And it's really like cute, <laughs> nice. <laughs> So a sense of like candor and earnestness, maybe. Yeah, like yeah. there, I feel like there isn't that much like posturing or like trying to make something really perfect most of the time. With like the people who are like really like Tumblr famous, like they love something and they share it, like through reblogs or through like what they are like original content. Yeah. It's like what they like genuinely really want to share and look at. Actually, that jives with something you just posted today, Lauren. You just reshared somebody that did like this really quick comic about like I'm so hungry. <laughs> How did it go? It's like I'm, I'm so, so hungry and I don't like anything in my yeah. fridge and I'm too broke <laughs> to go eat out. And then it's just like a moment of silence and then like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's not like this piece of illustrative beauty, right? Yeah. It's not. It's not a Thomas Kincaid painting or anything. It's just this quick little doodle, uh, just about a moment in her life. And so like so. This is this is currency on there, is it? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I, I so earlier we were talking about like Tumblr horror stories, and this okay, isn't, this yeah. isn't this isn't really a Tumblr horror story, but like on my Piffle the comic Tumblr, like I just post a bunch of random stuff that I make, and there's stuff that you know you spend a lot of time on and you're super proud of. And the thing that got most reblogs was something I did. Like that was similar to that was just a stick figure looking in a fridge and saying, looking into my fridge is a lot like looking into my bank account. And the stick figure <laughs> says, yeah, I can do nothing with this. Like, <laughs> that that got the most blogs out of everything. And then I have the, like this comic that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. This is great. Everybody's going to love this. And I post it and this like one person likes it. And yeah. then you're, you just like <laughs> flip tables. And you're like, Come on. <laughs> so, so emotion, like, like tying into relatable uh cathartic or visceral emotion that that counts for something yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay well then uh, this this i want i want to dig a little deeper into that cuz this is interesting to me so when you guys are posting your stuff how candid do you feel like you can be because i mean this this kind of flies against some older 
common wisdom on on the web is that you must craft a persona and you have to worry about your brand and you have to be very professional and and thank everybody for retweeting your thing you know um and then yeah that's one of the things when i go to tumblr i'm like the culture here is very different because people are being they're wearing their hearts and their sleeves so how do you guys think about that when you're posting your stuff um sometimes i do like yeah. obviously there's like especially on my personal blog there's some stories that I'm like, well, I don't think like they really need to hear this. This is something more for personal friends or anything. But there's still some times when I'm just like, oh, I just need to get this out right now. And like some people can like, be like, oh, I'm sorry. Or like I can relate or whatever. And you know, that's sort of with your, your artwork too when you're just like, oh, look how beautiful this is. And then I got to the hand and it's all like, you know, <laughs> distorted and the wrong hand. The wrong <laughs> size, and it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's not that big of a deal because yeah, again, it's part of maybe part of the age group and maybe just the culture. It's it's just, yeah, we just we understand. <laughs> We've been there. <laughs> I also think it's kind of the risk you take on Tumblr, uh, like putting your stuff out there because you know people can say whatever they want about it, but at the same time, that's one of the great things about the Tumblr community is you don't get a lot of people you don't get a lot of people who reblog something and are like, oh my god, look at this, isn't this drawn terribly? Like, I don't think I know of anybody who's ever had anything like that happen. Like, the only time that I think Tumblr gets up in arms about something is if there's, like, been a wrong. Like, I think there was something social about... Social justice. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, just social justice. Like, things get reblogged and everybody in the Tumblr community is like, burn them! <laughs> <laughs> but... I don't think I don't think anybody's ever drawn something and they're like, oh man, your hand, Pfft. like no. <laughs> well, I've seen people like, like I have some friends who have had a lot of Tumblr followers, and sometimes like, if they become really popular, like their followers end up getting this weird like sense that, like the person they're reblogging from can't see everything they're <laughs> like writing. So like sometimes people will be like really cruel to someone because they don't think of them as being just like a regular person because they're popular. It gets really weird sometimes when like fandom crosses over with like art and like someone just wants to post art they drew and like and then like they become popular enough like this weird like hive mind kicks in where it's like something's on your dash like you can say whatever you want about it and it doesn't matter if the original person sees it. And... Yeah. But they still get the <laughs> notifications so they, they totally do. Yeah. So, so there is some um... I, that doesn't sound like trolling as much as it sounds like people just being unaware of that they're being rude kind of thing. I mean, there's I definitely think, the trolls on occasion, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's... I think it's like if you become really big, it, it becomes like... Like, you, you they don't treat people... Like, if you become, like, really popular or whatever, they don't treat you, like, with the same amount of, like, respect or whatever. Or so, compassion. like, they start, like, saying whatever they want. Yeah. So I feel like if you're not, if you're not like, if you you haven't had your art like blow up because you happen to be like in a popular fandom or whatever, like you're, you're never going to have someone reblog with like, this art looks terrible, the anatomy is really bad. But then like, I've seen horror stories in my dash. I'm just like, why, why bother? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the whole like backlash that if you do get something that's reblogged a lot. It's usually just your image that gets reblogged. Like the one of the the girl who wanted wanted something to eat but didn't have any money. Like that gets reblogged, but you don't like. Usually people don't click back to the source. They're not like, oh my gosh, this is a really funny comic. I should go back okay. and look for more of those. Yeah, I want to go there because I I remember uh, a while back there was a lot of uh, static about. Um, sharing things without attribution on Tumblr. Mm -hmm. And worse, some people were stripping attribution. Yeah. Like yeah. they would remove it from the image. I, I wish I, w I was going to find it beforehand so I had like a, you know, the link to the original one, but I, I forgot to do it. But there was a comic about that one around that was like, you know, an artist and there's like a little person, a person that's like artwork or whatever it says labeled. Like here, go out into the world. And oh, I like, saw that. That yeah. was heart wrenching. And then like, you know, the artwork wandles up like a child up to like some <laughs> stranger and he's just like, oh, what a nice piece of artwork. Like, but, you know, we know it would be so much better without this and it like cuts off the kid's arm <laughs> and then it's like it's comparing it to like when you take off the source or the artist's caption and like mm -hmm. just to, for your own purpose and, you know, what a, like it's it's awful and like that happens all the time. It I'm, still happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. I honestly, if, if I could think back, like looking at that comic I reblogged, I'm not sure if the source was still on there or not. <laughs> Oh, I thought I thought Tumblr took steps to make sure that the source is always persistent. Uh, well, I mean, well, like, can, yeah, people can like save it and repost it in a new post. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually had this happen to me once, where like 
I had a new follower and I was like, oh, I'm gonna see, look at their blog, see what, what's going on there. And like, I think I had drawn a piece of Venture Time fan art like a month or two earlier and I think it must have turned up in Google image search because like I went to their blog and my art was there like in a different post. And I was, so like I messaged them and I was like, oh, that's, can you like take that down? You can just reblog it for me, it's really easy. And like apparently they didn't know it was from me because they're like, I just grabbed it off Google. Like I didn't know, I'm so sorry, but. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I thought it would just link back to my blog. Like, I put the source in, but. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to, like, you, I feel like nowadays people are putting, like, their signatures or, like, their logo on, like, their fan art just in case that kind of thing happens. And you don't want to make it, like, this huge thing. I don't you don't want to watermark it. Yeah, I don't want to, like, write Maggie Ram on top <laughs> of, like, everything that I make. So you try and make these, like, tiny little, like, logos, but then that's, that's kind of what bites everybody in the butt is that you make it small and then that's so easy for somebody just to be, like, and erase and this is mine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, you deal with that with a lot of other sites as well, like yeah. DeviantArt and like uh, Reddit, apparently. I don't have much experience with Reddit, but I talked to a friend who does use it more. Mm -hmm. And like the he'll, he, same thing had happened with that stick figure uh, comic of yours. Yeah. Like he posted a picture and it just blew up. It got to the front page and everything. But then like it's apparently like Reddit's known for like they take images and edit them because it's super easy. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, and so like a lot of those like collective like media websites like reddit and imger imger, imger, imger. whatever <laughs> yeah um a lot a lot of stuff that gets posted in there is like reposted content or it's somebody finds something original and they're like oh yeah this is cool i want to get like points or karma or something so yeah. i'm gonna post and pretend that it's mine or that my sister made it and everybody's Ooh. gonna be so like proud of me because i made this thing and then everybody's like no no we said that before <laughs> <laughs> that's ours Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start with Megan. Does, does the uh, the general Tumblr community police this in any way? Like, what's the general vibe? Is everybody like, well, you know, you get you get what you pay for. You 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 know, you you dine with the devil. You better have a long spoon and all that stuff. And like, uh, that's just the way it goes. Or do people does like the general outrage usually correct this kind of thing? I think well, well, there's I feel like there's like two different camps where like, oh, like there's some people who are just like, whatever, it's Tumblr. Who cares? Like. I took this picture and I re-edited the colors so it looks prettier with my theme and like deleted all your info, like whatever. <laughs> but then, like there's also a lot of people who will stick up for artists that they follow or just like art they like, like they'll be like, this is the source, like in, if you like look at the reblogs, which is really nice. So I feel like it's like there's always like a struggle between the people who do care about it and the people who don't care at all. <laughs> the light say, side and the dark side. Well, I was going to say there's probably a third side, which is the they kind of just kept reblogging. They didn't actually notice and felt they would feel bad later or maybe not care at all. Like they're just completely neutral. Just oh, yeah. I, I'll, or blogging. I've reblogged stuff and then I... You know, when I after I've done it, I'll be like, "Did I check for the source? I did not. Now I feel terrible." <laughs> uh, wow. So okay. Well, let's let's go into talking about. Oh, and actually, before we get to horror stories, I want to talk about theming, because like I said at the top, this thing is like it's weird, like this social network where it, it it's both a content management pro, uh, solution where you can have like a Tumblr page. You can have sub pages, and some people turn them into full on websites, right? Like dansantat.com. Ray Friendin, he, is, he runs his website off of Tumblr, and they look fantastic. They look like, you know, proper websites. Um, but when I log in, I'm always in my dashboard, and it, it gives me the content stream rather than, you know, like page, uh, I don't know, previews of all the people's different Tumblr pages, right? It just strips everything out and just gives you the content. So, question comes up. How much should I be thinking about my theme? If people, are, if once they follow me on Tumblr, they're just going to see my content in their stream anyway. Do I need to really fuss with it? Or how much do you guys fuss with it? I'll start with Megan. I mean, how much do you I, think about it? I used to, like, I think I used to try harder to make my theme look nice. But now I kind of just use the standard template and just, like, put, like, nice backgrounds and stuff. Because, like, my Tumblr, like, my main Tumblr is my art blog. So I don't really reblog anything on it except for my art and once in a while, like, my friend stuff. Um, so I want to keep like the archive neat if, in case like people find it through other things, but um, I don't really mess with it too much because I don't really look at it. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. Lauren? Um, I, I kind of would agree to that. Like I think it's good to make it look a little bit professional, simple to f read and get through and everything um, because yeah, if 
once it, you know the people who are on Tumblr are just going to see the content on their dash. But you know, what if someone links the Tumblr to some someone? Like, oh, you're a big fan of this, but you're not on Tumblr here. I'm just going to send you to this website, this individual blog. So you do want it like to look a little appealing, but it doesn't have to be like. I know a lot of people who do fuss with it all the time, but. Frankly, it's like most people don't wind up going back to that page once they start following you. It's just merely for people who are about to discover you. And then if they follow you, then they don't ever see it again. And if it's someone who's on Tumblr, they're going to see you maybe a couple times. <laughs> right, right. Like I've got a portfolio that I run on Tumblr. And that one I actually like, okay, let's get the theme to look kind of okay. Mm -hmm. Because this is meant for potential gigs to find me. Yeah. But then like my personal one is just like, whatever, here, checkered background. <laughs> there we go. Right. Yeah. I, I, I installed the theme, uh, theme on my personal one and I was going to be like, I'm going to custom all the, customize all the pictures for it, blah, blah, blah. Because like they, it was like permission, you know, don't change the basic format, but you can change the pictures on it. I'm like, oh, I'll do that. And I haven't touched in like five months. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'll get to it. And there are a lot of themes, but uh, I mean, we should say for people who don't yeah. use it, there's a ton of themes you can just use for free. And there's some uh, premium and, ones. And people make them too. Yeah. You can go in and like copy the code that they make and then, you know, like they, they'll give you the instruction, be like, don't edit this. You can edit this, you know. Mm -hmm. Be polite. Don't take out the, you know. Don't take out the attribution. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause, go ahead, oh. Maggie. I was just going to say, I think that the only issue that I've had with, uh, like, Tumblr themes is that sometimes, like, because you have that dashboard that you can, that you view your feed in, and um, you can click on things, and sometimes it, like, expands the picture, but sometimes, like, uh, I would follow Justice, like, the mini Justice League comics, Justice League 8, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and I love that comic, but the issue is when I click on it to make it bigger, I can't always read the text, and so then I'll go to the blog, and then I'll try and expand it there, and sometimes that still doesn't make it big enough for my eyes to comprehend, <laughs> so, um, and that's a problem that I have on my own site, too, is that sometimes making things, like, the content big enough for human eyes is difficult. <laughs> And is an issue like on the feed too. If you're just going through and you're like, oh yeah, I can't wait to read this comic, and then you click it and it goes from like this big to like that big, and you're like, oh, per perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So, yeah, I've struggled with like sizing on like both in my themes because like some themes auto stretch things, so it looks really yeah. weird if like you want your pictures to not be warped. So I ended up with the regular Tumblr theme, but then sometimes on my dash too, it's like you can see someone who didn't resize their comic to not being huge when they posted it on Tumblr because then when you try to click it it looks really small because you have to click on high res to get the readable version which is a pain. Yeah. The whole process. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the high res doesn't even work that well either. Uh, uh, should, how, many, how many Tumblrs should I have? Uh, because it's like, uh, I just talked with Ryan Estrada on the Lean Into Art cast at leanintoart.com. And one of the things we were talking about was uh, when he, we did an episode about how to get gigs, like how to freelance. And he said, you know, if I go to somebody's Tumblr page and they've got a bunch of reshares of other things, I'm like, well, where's your work? How do I find what you do? I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of pictures of Tom Hiddleston, but, <laughs> but I'm not You're seeing... never going to let me know that, <laughs> I think it's adorable. <laughs> I feel the same way about He-Man. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which will lead into the horror stories later on. But but uh, but anyway, it's like but so then okay, well then do I need like have a Tumblr for my my He-Man reshares and then a Tumblr for my Transformers fanfics? I, mean, I think we were talking about this earlier is that like even though we were like so excited to like tear apart Tumblr, like we're going to go home and we're going to we're going <laughs> to yeah. go on it. So I I think that that's like part part of the drug in that like like you can start an art Tumblr and then you can start following other people. But like I have, I have my art Tumblr and then I have my personal Tumblr. So that way, when I see like, when I see Loki and I see all those other <laughs> things that I need to reblog, I can reblog it there as opposed to reblogging it on my art blog. So that way, you know, they're not like, oh my god, she loves cat gifs. <laughs> <laughs> can't, oh god, could you just stop posting all these pictures of cats? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have. That's I have there. like four or something because I have my art blog, I have my reblog Tumblr, and then I have my comic archive and my pencil pop archive and my and the school of world Tumblr because like I want everything to be neat, <laughs> <laughs> like, nicely put together. 
Yeah, I'm looking right now how many I have. Um, I got well, seven. One, <laughs> oh, I got more than that. Okay. Holy cow. One, Whoa. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <laughs> eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, okay. fifteen. Oh my gosh. How do you have so many? Yeah, wait, can you tell us what each of those tumblers are? <laughs> well, some of them are defunct. Some of them are ones that I started, some of them are ones that I thought I was going to start. You know, you like know I'm, you can yeah. delete those. Can you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, for it's kind of similar. I have the personal blog where it's just the reblogging, you know, various, you know, text posts and gift sets and all that. I have my art Tumblr. And then I have uh, a couple private reference blogs that I can just, like, it's my own little, you know, I tag them in a certain way so I can find them later. Oh, I need to look at, like, oh, look at this dog. It's a really nice, like, anatomical picture of a dog. I, I'm going to need this later. Or, like, I really like the architecture of this. But since I don't want that showing up in the tags and I don't want people following, I keep it as a private. Yeah. Oh, uh, my gosh. That is the best idea <laughs> No, ever. yeah. One oh, of my, my God. One I of need my, to do that. Yeah, one of my tumblers is a private <laughs> reference one that Lauren taught me to do. She's like, yeah, just because... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much stuff comes to my feed. Like Amy Kim Kibuishi, uh, Kazu Kibuishi's wife, uh, author and cartoonist, awesome cartoonist. She posts the most amazing images of like just like great color theory images. Like mm -hmm. not like like it's an image that's like a, a master's course in color study. And I'm like, that's going. Yeah. You know, I got to hang on to that for my later. My mind is actually like blown right now because I just and <laughs> I usually just like like it and then like I yeah yeah if I'm like yeah if I'm like trying to remember I'm like oh my gosh there was that s such like a great comic that had wonderful colors and. <laughs> Like maybe it was in February and I'm just like going all the way down and now I'm gonna just create a blog and it's gonna be so much easier. And yeah, then, what you do is you also use your own tagging taxonomy to be able to sort it, right? Yeah, so it's like oh, this is great reference. <laughs> and then like on occasion, like I'll find like a piece of music that I really like, so I go like non-reference or like irrelevant or something. But I just like want to be able to find it again and not lose it in my personal blogs archives. And then like then I'll put like the characters that I want might might use this for like the names of the towns I might use in the comic or like, you know, to go back to it. And, you know, tutorials as well, you know. Yeah. When I did that, that started that OCT, um, my, my trainer had a lot of bird Pokemon. And I, <laughs> that was a learning experience. So like, I found this, this one went around that was like uh, dividing up the anatomy of bird wings. And I'm just like, oh, I need this. So <laughs> I can go back to it later. So it's like duality reference. So I could go back and look at it. So it's like, yeah, and it's it's been helpful. My life has been changed <laughs> in Ma this Ma moment. Megan, what were you going to What oh, I was, I was just, I was just going to say that eventually I think your likes, like if you try to go back and search in your likes, they delete them or something. Oh, so that was part good. of why I started a separate reblog Tumblr for like inspiration and just stuff I liked because it's impossible to find anything in your likes. Yeah, I also think that at some point they're like, okay, you've liked enough stuff. You're never <laughs> yeah, going to no, find this ever again. I'm taking oh. off. That, like, if you try yeah. to scroll through your likes, I think there's a point where it just stops. Mm. Probably because there's too many. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that you joked about it having, like, you know, having a He-Man blog. That's another thing that people do is they do do specific themed blogs. Like, um, I don't know if she wants me to share this. I don't know the URL, so I won't be too sharing. But uh, my friend Erin has, like, one for cute bakery kind of things and stuff. And I had one for a couple from a game that I would just post fan art of that. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, it's something that you don't want to spam your normal followers with, but then you can grab a whole other set of attention. You yeah, know? there's like a new, or one of the newest blogs I think that someone started was Tom Hiddleston holding sloths. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you could, do, you could do something like that. And also, if you're listening, it's a, it's a very entertaining blog. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like and the great thing is they have them in all these like crazy poses or something, and then there's just this sloth that's just like hanging somewhere, uh, just photoshopped great. and yeah. everything. Oh my god, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> so I love this idea of because like, well, the, one of the things a common theme on this show and on the Lena Tart show that I do is um, finding the unique thing about your creative voice, finding your voice, right? Mm -hmm. And part of finding your voice is finding out what makes you spiritually creatively mad what drives you up a wall and that's what you bring as a unique feature to your art and i like this idea of tumblr as a platform encouraging you to celebrate that specific thing because that's going to help you craft your uh presence online right as like so when people think of he-man they think of me right because i talk <laughs> about he-man all the time right and i draw he-man all the time yep, right you're gonna start your he-man blog after this <laughs> well now we can get into blog like number 17 18 <laughs> and 19. <laughs> <laughs> i want to get into some like dark areas now because right. the, the you bringing up he-man brings us up uh i did a, so so dean trip 
who I follow on Tumblr. He's got a great tumble, tumble log, uh, deantrip.tumblr.com. And he loves Batman, like, probably more than I love He-Man. And so he's always <laughs> posting all these images of Batman, all these different artists posting great drawings of Batman. And it's delightful to watch. I love looking at Batman coming through my feed. And I'm always reminded that Dean Tripp equals Batman, right? Um, so I'm like, oh, I should be doing that with He-Man. I'm going to type in the tag He-Man into the search tag. <laughs> and, and then I went, oh, no, oh, no, this boy just became a man today. And, <laughs> and I wasn't ready for it. And, and then I, I, I posted about it on Twitter. I was like, oh, I didn't. I looked at He-Man tags, and I'm so sad now. And, and then somebody was like, mm, shouldn't have searched the tags. <laughs> so, so, okay, horror stories. Because for the, somebody who's new to this thing, like I was, uh, how tags can be a wonderful thing or a terrible thing, can't they, Megan? <laughs> I don't really have any horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> I just was try I just like try to pay attention to what tags are uh, like being used by people with similar work to me, but I still don't really know like what tags people check the most. Okay. So <laughs> So you've never like done like a search for like Sailor Moon tags and found something that you wish you never saw. <laughs> well, I've probably, like, I, I've searched for things in the tags, but I usually kind of stay away from it because it's, like, too much too much stuff at once. <laughs> like, I like going through, like, my feed and finding things. I don't, like, if I look through the tags, there's, like, too much information and then also, yeah, random adult material. Yeah, that's the weirdest yeah, part. Yeah, that's yeah. the weirdest part. You find, like, like adult Smurf stuff. I'm like, really? You know, like... <laughs> That doesn't seem congruous to me. Because but... Tumblr is one of the very few social media sites that allows not safe for work content. Oh. Most of them will, you know, attempt to hide it. You know, DeviantArt is getting terrible yeah, at this. But... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually, like, I feel like I've seen less of it than I did when I was on DeviantArt. Because, like, on Tumblr, you can just, like, if you don't follow people who post random stuff, it's like, yeah. but you it, can it's... just avoid it if you don't want to see it. Yeah, I but mean, like, on DeviantArt, it would be, like, on the front, front page. page. <laughs> it's, like, on the front page, like, somebody, like, wearing absolutely nothing. And everybody's, like, oh, I like that. And you're, like, oh, God, where's, you know, where's the other stuff? <laughs> well, like, okay, very but... very specific Shrek artwork. Like, <laughs> I don't really see that so much on Tumblr. <laughs> but, well, it's, that's because, well, because it's, it's more about the tag system. It's, like, you said that you like to see this content more just going through your dash but okay um it's you know it's not small but it's not like the biggest fandom but i am part of the persona fandom i follow certain tags for specific characters and it um you know that stuff will pop up all the time but even though i just want like oh i just want this nice picture or maybe someone's head canon about it or fan fiction like i don't necessarily want to see that but um and there's not much you can do about it because like sometimes they don't tag not safe for work in the tag so you can't blacklist it or you know they recently whoa you can blacklist tags you have yeah. to get an extension a, a plug-in but yes um tumblr tumblr savior and then you can type in like blacklist and there's a whitelist as well for things you always want to see Ooh, um, i like that <laughs> but yeah. but that be careful with the he-man <laughs> but that still <laughs> relies other people to tag saying that this is explicit or whatever and then like tumblr just recently added in that you know you can block adult blogs but that also requires them to register their blog as an adult blog yeah so you know it's kind of just like you can't it's the internet it's the inter <laughs> yeah it's the internet um but and, and even so like on deviantart you know they they do have a certain limit you do see like a lot of naked people and things that are questionable as it is but they do you know they say they do draw a line fortunately most of the time and tumblr doesn't it's like whatever whatever yeah. floats your boat mm -hmm. go for it <laughs> i was so i'm trying to create this comic and i have like a kraken sort of thing and i wanted to look up references for uh <laughs> Tentacles. Never search no. tentacles. Oh, no. Never no. search tentacles in anything. And I don't even know I don't even know why I thought it would it would be okay. But I was just I went I think I went to like Google images first and I was just like tentacles. None of none of the thing no, just mm -mm. Oh. bad, bad well, idea. Well safe search on, right? Uh, even so sometimes mm. I, it's the same thing with Tumblr. Like it's still the stuff slips through even if they tag it properly or if they got the adult context. Tumblr, why do you want to make me so sad? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to you have to be careful with you can you can search for multiple tags. So I could be like tentacle octopus, 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 and, like, <laughs> and they're like, or you could be like he meant comics, comics. Did they finally implement a multiple tag search? What did they finally? I I don't know. One? I don't. I thought that was like that's what I'm looking for is for a multiple tag search mm. to focus like stuff down. If you you're can just also, like 
like you can also just go to Google and search multiple tags and Tumblr, and usually, usually that works. Okay. Sometimes, because yeah. I've I've searched for stuff on Google before, and then it's pulled it up on Tumblr, and it's been like, oh, you're looking for like cat gifs. That's a, <laughs> that's gonna be the example of the day. But it's like, oh, you're looking for cat gifs, and it's like, here is, is uh all the cat gifs that have ever been posted on Tumblr, and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My day's gone. Yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, you can, like, phrase it a little bit differently in Google so, like, you don't have to sit there and do the, the search in Tumblr itself. Yeah. And, like, you know, cats rolling in boxes or <laughs> cats doing this. like <laughs> Cats with other animals. Those, those are the posts that, that I see in Lauren, come from uh, Lauren's feed that have the tag, my babies. <laughs> <laughs> my babies. All the little kitties running around. <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, continuing down our dark path together. Uh, ask me a question. Ask me a question. And somebody asked in the chat, uh, Kelly Blue says, uh, anonymous asks, anonymous hate on Tumblr reactions. But I, wa I want to specifically focus around the anonymous questions or uh, that you guys can get. Because that was one of the first things that I turned off when I logged in. I'm like, why would I want people to ask me questions? They can just email me, you know, and off. I'm not doing that. But then I see a lot of people using the ask me a question thing to like create blog posts. And Meg, you yourself said that, you know, part of the school of world, right, comic is based on people asking Papa questions, right? So yeah. I wonder if you could speak to that first, Megan. Like, um, why use that? I mean, on, on my personal art blog, I don't think I really even, I'm not sure if it's turned on or not on my blog. I don't really get that many anonymous ones. But on School of World, we haven't even really had a problem because um, the comic is set up. So it's specifically like, if you want to ask Papa a question, ask it in our ask box. That's part of why we put it on Tumblr is because we wanted people to talk to us. So we haven't actually had any problems with having anonymous on. Like, we've had a lot of anonymous questions probably from people we know. <laughs> um, <laughs> we didn't want us to know they were flooding our ask box, but um, for us it's been really useful for School of World because then we have a lot more questions that we wouldn't have had otherwise. But I think, like on my personal blog, I don't really get anonymous questions, but I've seen people I know getting anonymous questions that have been not great sometimes. So I think it depends on your audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've gotten I've gotten a bit of both on. Um, on uh, my own personal Tumblr blog, like every once in a while, I'll be like, hey, like send me something to draw. Like, do you want me to draw something? Just because it's good practice. And then like maybe your followers will love you more. Um, and <laughs> I had somebody be like, draw me a jellyfish or something. And so like I drew him a jellyfish and that was great. So like sometimes I have that kind of stuff where people will be like, oh, like I really like this thing that you did. But then um, my personal blog, like there was one time, I, I think it was when Ann Hathaway and James Franco were like, hosting the Academy Awards. And I was like, oh my God, if they had a baby, it would be perfect. And then somebody was like, if you and Anne Hathaway had a baby, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and so yeah, you get, you just get kind of like, sometimes you just get kind of weird. Creepy creepers. Things, yeah. Which is weird because like my personal blog, like it's like what you said, it's like, it's people, it's mostly people that I know. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why they're asking anonymously. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's been fun. Yeah, I don't, I've, I've not had a lot of experience with anonymous questions on either my art blog or my personal blog, but um, one of the things that did wind up happening, for, again for that uh, OCT, um, I had I created a separate blog for that, like not even a side blog for my account. I created another account, um, and what we would do to like since it was all about role playing and stuff like that, we would post like memes, like and uh, kind of questions or prompts, and you know do it as your character it's just to get so you get a better idea of what they're like whether that, that actually is canon and shows up in the tournament itself it doesn't matter it was like and also it bonds the community like it was a huge thing for quite some time that, that makes me wonder is, it, is are there any examples of artists who have made tumblers for their characters like their character runs the tumbler I'm sure there is, but yeah, I don't. I don't know of any specifically, but I mean, it's it's Tumblr. It's kind of like once you think it into being, it has to exist. <laughs> well, okay, I know that they don't. They don't necessarily do it. F I don't know about like their own original characters, but definitely fan characters. Yeah. Like that happens okay. all the time. They make role playing blogs again for like these tournaments. I know uh, Duality, the one that I was in, is not the only one who does it. Um, the one that I first like, I started actually following these character blogs for the one. What was it? Um, of course, now I forget it. Um, but it was like kind of like a World War II based Pokemon uh, OCT. Okay. Uh, and run. Uh. And I started following artists on that because they post art for that. And it was just interesting to see the characters develop through it. Um, but 
otherwise I haven't seen like for their own personal comics or something. Yeah, I think that I think that mostly art like fans of artists would be in charge of those blogs more than anything else just because a lot of I don't I feel like artists are busy well sure <laughs> doing, sure. <laughs> doing yeah. the art I feel like if someone if someone was going to do that I feel like the ask blog would be the main like project like I feel like you don't usually have time to make something that elaborate for your own character yeah like if yeah. it's someone else's character you can have a lot of passion about like I really love this character I'm gonna make this blog but I think I like I feel like I've seen Tumblr blogs where like the premise was like I made up this character and like the way you're gonna interact is through this Tumblr. Yeah. Okay. And like there's not there's no other media, it's just this Tumblr where you can like interact, but can't remember. Because well, I just think about I mean, this is again going back ten years, back when forums were the main way to interact with readers, and I set up a forum where my characters were the only people who interacted with people in the forum like I as an author did not have an account in there but all my characters did and the readers loved it they loved having conversations with my characters and it was work it was work having to like because people would ask like you know like hey Jared what did you have for breakfast this morning well now I got to craft some kind of clever response in the character the style of Jared's character right yeah B I actually think now that I'm thinking on it there used to be this comic called chaos comics and I think that um, the artist of that gave each character a Facebook page and a Twitter account yeah. and then would do the same kind of thing yeah. um, and would kind of, so they wouldn't necessarily have an art blog, but they would have something so either you could like like the page or you could like talk to the character or you could see the characters like interactions with each other. So yeah. they'd be like, yeah. hey dude, want to <laughs> grab some coffee? And they'd be like, oh yeah, with another <laughs> character. Yeah, I mean, I see I see in character Twitters and such like that because yeah. that, that's a lot easier. That's, you know, the, they got the word limit and you don't have to, maybe you can goof off a little bit in it, especially since they feel like your char if you're, you know, your characters are set in like a fantasy world. Obviously, they're not going to have access to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's um, true. Another thing that I remember, I keep going back to Pokemon related stuff, but Nuzlocke's, um, it got, got really popular. And for other things, for other comics who I've read where they had like, you know, I'm going to open up questions to the characters. And they'll just do like, they'll pick like 10 questions for each character and do like a little short response comic to each of them. Mm -hmm. And like sometimes group questions. And they'll be just like, well, what do you think of this character? And they'll be like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in some humorous way and such. But like, yeah, the, I've definitely seen a lot of those. So. Okay. Oh, wait, I realized I actually did this nice. <laughs> in School of World, there's a strip for a little boy. Um, asks Papa how to do comic or something, and then I made him a little tumbler of his really terrible comics that I like <laughs> you know, at one point, and then I forgot about it because I didn't really bother updating it. Like, they're in the back of the book, but... Yeah, I've got it right here. <laughs> I don't know if it gets a, this There's camera. a whole Tumblr called Papa Teaches Me to World, which yeah. is a <laughs> really terrible Tumblr with really bad graphics. But then I like stopped updating it after I well, put you, those. <laughs> you yeah. did something like that with Jared too, didn't you? I did. I for a while there, and I think it's on Tumblr. Yeah. I think that's one of the Tumblrs I have. It's it's me Jared, <laughs> me Jared .tumblr .com, uh, or oh gosh, now I don't remember. But <laughs> but just search for Jared the Bountiful Snowman Tumblr. Uh, oh, I can pull it up right here. Yeah, it's me Jared. Um, and it was yeah, Crayon Comics that he drew about his life. Uh, <laughs> But that was another thing where it's like I posted those things and like some of them kind of caught on a little bit and some of them didn't. But but the interesting thing was is I told nobody about it. Like or I didn't make hardly any noise about it. Let me put it that way. And I just used tags, right? So like I had one where um, uh, Jared and Orange Guy are walking out of a tree and then cobras come out of the tree and like ah tree cobras and then Orange Guy punches the tree into outer space. And then I show the International <laughs> Space Station like ah space cobras. <laughs> I was I, I liked that one. I thought it was good. But I, I I tagged it with like International Space Station cobras and like everything that was in the comic and that one actually got passed around a little bit and seen by people. Okay, thing to note though, I don't know if this is like a new thing or if it's actually just been that way always and they never told us. But um, in the tag system, only the first five tags show up in the search. Oh, really? so put the most put the most important in the first five. Oh, that's a good tip. Thank so, you. For that. Like you can still obviously like click them and it'll send you to like that tag search, but yeah. like it might not necessarily be there. I used to. Um, well, a that sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> B uh, I used to do that for. Um, I used to be the YouTube manager for my acapella group, which is just a great intro sentence but um <laughs> i i had to put all of these videos on youtube and so you know they have a tag system there too and just so everybody could find the tags really quick because our our name was the dixon janes but you know you could get anything with that and so for one of the tags i put brad as a banana so if you <laughs> because one of our 
uh, members was annoying. Not really. You're wonderful, Brad, if you see this crap. Um, but, uh, so if you search Brad is a banana in YouTube, all, like, all of our videos would pop up. So, like, sometimes, sometimes, like, see, I, I don't, I've done that with my Tumblr. I've put something, I've put, like, a tag that, like, nobody would think of searching, and it pops up. So, hmm. Maybe I'm, yeah, maybe maybe I don't tag as many things as I I think I do. Maybe I have like three. Well, and that uh, having an easy to remember and idiosyncratic tag would be a great way to help people find you on Tumblr, right? Rather than having to do the tumble off. It, it's also again helpful for the Tumblr savior for people to blacklist. Like I post all my like personal text posts that are just like me ranting about life. I put them as me, my life, and I. So if someone <laughs> just doesn't want to hear that, they just want to see me reblog a bunch of gift sets and such, then they can blacklist that and it'll hide it from your dash. But that doesn't work on mobile, right? No. Yeah. I think also cut text doesn't work on mobile. I can't imagine a lot What's of that. Wait, can I, can I have a, can I insert um, a question? Do you guys use, you guys use Tumblr on your phone a lot? I yeah. do. Uh, okay. Because... <laughs> Well, she saw me earlier. I was trying to like make a phone call on a smartphone, and <laughs> and it didn't work. So, like, how's tum how's how's Tumblr on a phone? Um, I mean, I I scroll through Tumblr like when I'm on the train and stuff. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. But like I said, like if if someone tries to put something behind a cut, which is like, it's like if you if you have like a really long rant that you don't necessarily want everyone to read, you can have a little read more link, and it'll like if you click it, you can read it. But on mobile, you just have to scroll past the whole thing. Yeah. So sometimes people have like, oh, here's like my private rant that like, if you want to read it, you can read it. But I don't want yeah. everyone to see it. On mobile, it's just there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess my problem is like, I just like the images don't load that well sometimes as well. Yeah. Well, they kind of like freeze. On yeah, the they freeze, or they just have like the gray box of where they're supposed to be. When it and comes to cell phones, like, I'm like, oh. adult will come up and have to scroll. Really <laughs> <laughs> Hope that no one was looking over your shoulder. <laughs> Okay, well, we got to get the book recommendations. We just burned through an hour, guys, oh. and I, I am, I implore you that we can come back <laughs> together, re reconvene this roundtable because this was really awesome. This time just flew by. Uh, but final thought. Uh, so I got a Tumblr. A bunch of people pass my thing around. So what? What do I get out of this thing? As the capitalist that I am, how do I benefit from this outside of saying a lot of people like me? <laughs> is that why? Is that is that why you want stuff to get shared around? But or what what does this turn into once you're Tumblr famous? Um, I feel like yeah, it's a little bit like you get you know the satisfaction of the fact that they're gonna they see it. A lot of people see it, and but also like it gets out to people that necess not necessarily would know anything of you, or like maybe if it's an original work, then like oh this is really cute. I want to keep looking at this update and stuff like that. Like it's mm -hmm. it's not necessarily maybe they're not that big into comics, but this one interests them enough that they're like oh I'm gonna read it. So you might get some new audience that you wouldn't get otherwise. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like there's only gonna be a certain percentage of people who read your comic online who are actually gonna buy something from you later. But the more people you get to see it, the like that percentage is more people. <laughs> 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 So, like, like if we didn't have um, School of World on Tumblr, we probably wouldn't have sold any books. We probably wouldn't have made books at all because there wouldn't be any reason to. But since, like, on Tumblr people can share it, it's really nice that, like, we get more readers and people saying that they love it. And we wouldn't have it otherwise. Yeah, I... I, one of the things that I like about Tumblr is that you can make these, uh, you can, like, even that, like, tiny little sketch comic about the fridge, like, you can send that out, and then you just have a bunch of people who are like, oh, yeah, know that feel, bro. <laughs> and I don't know, that's nice that you're, like, even even if it's just, like, a reblog, even if it was only, like, a second in their internet day, it was, it's nice that you, like, made a connection with a bunch of people and that kind of thing. However, I do have this like nightmare that like my gravestone is going to like read my name and then it's going to be like one time one of her pictures got re <laughs> like 11,000 times like I just like I have a, I'm just like worried that I'm like walking around and have or like that later on like <laughs> the majority of my life is going to be judged by the one it's, thing that it's a catchphrase me. thing right it's like you don't want to be the guy who had that one really big catchphrase in 1989 yeah right you want to be Robert Pattinson <laughs> <laughs> who? Robert Pattinson, the guy who played Edward from Twilight. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want to be just like to have that one thing that you remember for that like, is inconsequential to you or you want to put it behind you, right? Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm just going to get that comic engraved. <laughs> on my... It would be she like, Maggie Ram, stuff. something about fridge? <laughs> <laughs> she was the fridge girl. Yeah. She did the fridge comic, right? Oh, yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, it, it, I will. Uh, it's time to switch to book recommendations, and Sharon Iverson is waiting to come in. So here's the problem: one, one of these guys has to leave. Lauren, I think it's going to be you because you're sitting at the end of the table. But uh, so we can talk about book recommendations for a few minutes. But uh, before you go, Lauren, so awesome to have you on the show. Where can we find your Tumblr? Lazuliart.tumblr.com. Lazuli Art, as in lapis lazuli. Yeah. Dot Tumblr dot com. Yep. And then if they want to see your personal stuff. No. <laughs> uh, Blizzardpod.tumblr.com, all one word. Same as my, uh, uh, um, my DeviantArt. Okay, and that, yeah, blizzardpod.deviantart.com mm -hmm. to find your work. And uh, we can tease that you're working on a book kind of with me right now. Yes. Yeah, yes. which we need to talk about. But, yes. uh, but, but yeah. <laughs> Have but it I, with me. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay, yes. okay, well, I'll look at it after we're done recording. Okay. But yes, uh, very excited about that. It's something to do with magic and teddy bears, and <laughs> it should be pretty good. And dragons. And dragons. Far more important than teddy bears. No, the teddy bears are the no. best part. Oh. See, I was <laughs> drawn in by the teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for coming, Lauren. And while Sharon comes in, I'll turn to Megan. Did you have uh, book recommendations that you wanted to throw out for this segment of the show? Uh, I have one book. I have it with me. Um, the Hyperbole and a Half book. Oh. Uh, like I, I, it, it was originally a blog, um, and it took her a while to write the book, but it's really good. And there's some like extra, like her, it's her blog where she has like art, and then like she writes these essays about like things that she did growing up or like things that she did recently, and like the the pictures are so funny, and then the writing is so funny. Um, and so there's new things in the book too, and I was trying to read it as slowly as possible, <laughs> so I could like savor it. But I read it too quickly because it was so it was so good. So she yeah. is a wizard at capturing uncomfortable moments in drawings. <laughs> yes, uh, and and it, that kind of drives with the, what we were talking about today that this idea of like creating something that people emotionally connect to and say, "Oh man, that was me," or "This, this is me right now. This was me yesterday," kind of thing. Gosh, she's so good at that. I, I remember one of her early strips that I first crossed my radar was like when you're waiting in line for something and you see somebody across the room that you don't want to talk to, but they see you and they're waving and they're smiling really big and then your face slowly starts melting as they're getting closer <laughs> to you kind of thing. Uh, so good. So good. So, uh, she loves her dog. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're like so crude, but also so perfect. Perfect dog. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like she's she's not what you would call a technical, technically proficient illustrator, right? But that's the charm of her yeah, work. Yeah, but no, like you you know the perfect. exact emotion, and yeah, the exact like whatever she's trying to capture with these. I yeah, her dogs are the absolute best thing. Yeah, no, I, I love her work. Uh, so uh, hyperbole and a half the book, um, and then that makes me turn to Sharon Iverson of the Ann Arbor District Library. Good Hello. to see Sharon. Yep. So, did you bring books? Well, I, I always bring books. <laughs> Probably nothing to match hyperbole and a half. But, um, no, I brought books along. and I Oh, okay. I you had them hidden. I didn't see them, so I thought, oh, did she, did she just came no, to talk? No, I'm just going to, like, do hand signals and stuff. <laughs> um, I also want to just mention this Sunday we have our next Comic Artist Forum with Ted Woods. Mm -hmm. And this will be from 1 to 4 here at the Downtown Library just outside the studio, uh, fourth floor meeting room. And he's going to talk about artists um, trying to develop their own style when initially they're inspired by others and mm -hmm. obviously maybe want to Im imitate. And how do you take that and make, you know, develop your own style of art? So that's, mm. what, that's what's coming. And that, that I should say that's uh, from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Ann Arbor District Library. It's a free monthly event that the library mm -hmm. puts on where we have a speaker come in. They do like a 20 to 40 minute thing. Yeah. And then like the rest of the time, it's a two hour event, the rest of the time is just meant for just drawing and hanging out with cartoonists. So right. if you were in the Ann Arbor area and you're like, where are all the cartoonists? Uh, that's one of the places to find them. <laughs> and I usually... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I started talking like a commercial, <laughs> but but I mean the, I go to the thing. I'm there. You can come watch me draw Captain Cat. I work on Captain Cat uh, on my tablet while while hanging out at the forum. So right, right. So yeah. I have a couple books and um, tune tune. I can't get my hands yet on volume two, which is I assume going to come soon into the library. It might 
Oh, I got to hold it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tim Derek is, Kirk Kim. is a really, I, I kind of got a thing about Derek Kirk Kim. And that was <laughs> thanks to Jersey who said, oh, you've got to read him. You haven't <laughs> read him. Um, this is about a kid named Andy who um, is just kind of like his life is going nowhere. He's dropped out of art school because he thinks he's going to head into the most spectacular career. And uh, he's living at home. His parents are like bugging the heck out of him to get a job, get a job, get a job, when he meets two interesting people who are offering just that. But not quite what he's expecting. This yeah. is volume one, Vanishing Point. Volume two is out. Um, Can't recommend it enough. Oh, it's really, it's so really good. good. No, Derek or Kim is a master. He's yeah. a master. Mm -hmm. Makes me cry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've got bookmarks in here. My apologies. I have fairy tale comics, which I just bumped into at the shelf the other day, and I I think I got excited when I saw Ramona Fraden listed yeah. in here. And how old is she? She's at least eighty. Yeah, still working. Still working. She worked on Aquaman in the sixties. Right, and so this is a whole collection put together by Chris Duffy of a number of. Different creators, Raina Telgemeier has, Rapunzel, mm -hmm. um, Raina Fraden, or Ramona Fraden, in her little bit more traditional thing is The Prince and the Tortoise. And then I like, well, I like them all, but <laughs> um, yeah, here's, here's and there's Raina's. Rapunzel, as <laughs> only she can do it. Yeah. And then, and then I liked... Um, this one, which is Baba Yaga, oh, and I love that story. and it's cool because at the beginning of each tale, at the bottom in the corner, they'll say from this one's from the Russian tale by Jillian Tamaki. Sorry, okay. they've got a they've got a Goldilocks and the three bears, and the bears and Goldilocks are just like perfectly <laughs> portrayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, talk about an interesting contrast because um, Goldilocks and the three bears, of course, has all the fun panels that, you know, just pace you through the story. But in Baba Yaga, it's almost like single page but multiple action going on yeah. that you talk about a lot, Jersey, when you're <laughs> teaching, you know, that all the things that you as a cartoonist can do to, you know, propel the action forward um, with, you know, stuff going on and move the story right along. I just think it's really cool. So that's another one. I think there's a nursery... Tale. Nursery Rhyme Comics. Nursery yeah. Rhyme Comics. Yep, that so was another one. That's kind of a fun thing, and I'm a big Hilda fan. Hilda and the Midnight Giant. This, this is the one new one. Is Hilda and the Bird Parade. Yeah. And Hilda and her mother have moved into town. I, I swear this is in Norway, but you know we don't know where. It seems like some northern European country. And Hilda uh, wants to go out and explore. And when she lived in the mountains with her mom, it was no problem, you know, just go out and run around. But her mother is freaked out about her going out into the dangerous city. But when some friends come from school to take her out, um, mom gives relents and gives her permission. But the friends she's just getting acquainted with and the things that they think is really cool, like ultimately one of them is to throw stones at um, birds in a tree and one actually connects oh no and yeah and so oh. then Hilda's freaked out because this bird is it dead is it dead <laughs> and thus begins an interesting adventure for Hilda because that bird is not your average bird Hinted uh -huh. from the title bird parade Luke Pearson Hilda and the bird parade bird parade yep Fantastic books. Yeah. Uh, my book recommendation this time, I don't often get to do them. We always run out of time, and actually we're running long today, but uh, there's too much good stuff to talk about. Is I'm just going to recommend School of World by Megan <laughs> Brennan and Rel. It's so, so funny, and it's unlike anything that you've ever read. I mean, you talk about finding your voice and finding mm -hmm. your style. This, The thing I love about it is that it, it feels like... I, I can't describe it. it. It's it's you can't find the same. This is pure Megan, right? This is pure <laughs> Megan and Rel, and like th that's that makes the book all the more precious because it doesn't feel like oh this is reminiscent of X, right? You don't get that experience with this. This is it feels very very fresh, and it's really, um, it's it's 
it's got this whimsical style and it's very simple, but it's so richly funny in its simplicity. That's what I love about it. So I uh, mm. can't recommend this enough. The other one is Pencil Pup, folks. Read Pencil Pup and get the mini comic. <laughs> I love, Megan, that you made the mini comic into a composition book with like the, the hole cut out of the front with Pencil Pup's face poking out of it. Um, and it's, it's, it's like the sweetest nightmare I've ever had reading that book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, that would be that'd be the poll quote for me. Is it the sweetest nightmare I've ever had? It, it, it's it's so uncomfortable, but it's so warm. It's so warmly uncomfortable. Uh, I, I can't get enough of it. So, congratulations on a year of pencil pup, uh, yeah. and looking forward to more of it. Uh, so yeah, okay. Well, thank you, Sharon, for the sure. book recommendations. Thank you, uh, Megan, Brennan. M Megan, where can we find more about you? Um, uh, my website is megan-brennan.com. Um, my Tumblr, my main Tumblr, which I reblog links to things on, is um, megthebrennan.tumblr. Everything else is linked on there. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll link to all, everything else in the show notes as well for folks who are watching. And then, so yes, thank you again, Megan. I'd love to have you back to talk more about this, uh, this and more topics. Uh, Maggie, where can we find more about you? Where are you? <laughs> Um, well, you'll probably find most most of me at um, <laughs> ipsurvivalblog.weebly.com, and there you can see me struggle as I try and make a long-term comic that has like a plot and characters and things. And uh, I want to go back to just the the fridge scribble, but that's <laughs> that's that's where you can find me. <laughs> and we should say you, you you studied or are studying under Phoebe Glockner. Yeah, um, actually, she's she's kind of like my mentor at the art school right now. I'm in the final stage, so this graph or this comic that I'm making is going to be my senior thesis. So, oh, uh, <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So if that if that actually if I don't like accidentally like combust from the insides from like the amount of work that I have to do then I would totally like bring that like the final product over here um or Sweet. combust from the insides so yeah but Phoebe's, probably both yeah Phoebe's uh um uh, my, my gl the Glock in my pocket as uh I've started to call her Phoebe Glockner but yeah she's my she's helping me out over there uh that's that we can't ask for better you yeah know, as far as guidance and advice on making comics and yeah. Phoebe's one of the best so well best of luck to you uh Thanks. when you're done I'm Come gonna, I'm gonna back. need, I'm gonna need all, all the luck I can get. <laughs> Everybody will be cheering you on on yeah. Tumblr. Say, I, I feel you when you do the, 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 the <laughs> stick figure comic about you combusting. Yeah, like I feel the, you, bro. And then I'll be posting. This is me in real life. Uh, <laughs> All right, this show will be archived at comicsagreat.com slash CAG90. And uh, if you enjoyed this discussion, something you can do right now is if you're watching it on YouTube, you can give it a thumbs up to help more people find the show. You can go to iTunes, you can give us a star review. You don't, don't even have to write a whole review, although, you know, nice kids do. Uh, but, <laughs> but you just pick how many stars you think we deserve for this discussion. And I All think we them. deserve a lot. All the stars, as, as uh, uh, Hyperbole and a Half would say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, we'll be back in a couple weeks. Uh, December 11th, I think, is our next show. It's the final show of 2013. I've got uh, Dave Roman and Raina Talgemeyer. We're going to continue the tradition of doing a uh, uh, comics discussion with Dave and Raina to close out the year. And uh, so thanks for downloading and watching and listening. And thanks for hanging out with us on the live stream. Until next time, I've been Jersey Droz of ComicsAreGreat.com and Jersey on Twitter. Okay, bye. Yeah, we just got to stack our books. <laughs> <laughs>